This is Eagle Owl, and today I will be talking about Fletcher Cox. Yes, he's officially out. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. He is out for the game. Also, I want to talk about Jonathan Gannon. Do we actually miss him? And Leon Collins, an offensive lineman on the market. Should we go grab him? But let's get straight into it. All right, so let's get straight into it. Fletcher Cox is officially out. There's no speculations. Okay, so we just gonna go with my guy, Joe Castro, AKA Philly Philly, the podcast, as far as his injury report. Again, the injury report takes so long to come out, but to be fair, I see the Eagles just started practice, so the injury report is probably not gonna come out to seven, eight o'clock, but this is what he reported. Fletcher Cox, as we know, is out. Uh, Marlon T, triceps, he's, he did not practice. He was out. So more than likely, he's not playing Sunday. And Cam Jurgens, Cam Jurgens' foot. Uh, good news is Britton Covey, it looked like he might be limited today with his concussion, but he was out there practicing. Um, look. It's going to be interesting. I know he asked a question in that tweet, too, about who the Eagles will elevate. It's going to be interesting who they elevate. But to me, it's probably no doubt from the practice squad. They might elevate the guy we just signed because Tyler Steen and Mauro Jamo is technically on a 52 man roster already. But you got to you know, drop some people down as inactive because even though it's a what, 53 man roster, I believe you only could keep a, around 40 ish on the active roster. So they have to drop some people to inactive. But I believe those guys will be active like the Mauro Jamos and the Tyler Steen. Then they bring up the cornerback for him to play. So obviously Fletcher Cox and it looked like Marlon T is going to be inactive. So that's two spots right there. Um, Look, man, Fletcher Cox has been phenomenal been phenomenal and again shout out to philly philly the podcast i didn't even think of this um on my morning video i was like yo we get to see like the future we get to see jalen carter jordan davis milton williams and maro jamo then you got you know kadavia street and stuff in there i'm like well you get to see a young core and see how they will gel together but i didn't think of well maybe this is the time where Jalen Carter could show his dominance because now he has more opportunity on the field. Instead of playing less than 50 and playing in that 40 range percent of the snaps, maybe it go up to 60 and 70. You know, maybe he can show like, look, I should be on the field a little longer, even though to me he proved that. But you know how we like to rotate guys. Um, so, yeah, we will see Jalen Carter, I believe, take a lot of the workload and as he should and he deserves it to me he's not a guy that gets tired really quick um he, he's been rested so he's well rested and then it's gonna go back to the same old same old once fletcher cops come back but i believe this game i believe uh jalen carter play around 60 to 70 percent of the snaps we need him to be dominant we definitely need him to be dominant this game so rest up uh fletcher cops you know, the epidural thing. I still didn't even get a chance to ask my wife about it, like how long it took for her to recover. But, I, but from what I remember, I think it was like a week. So it makes sense. I know some people was in my comments like, yeah, I had back problems before and I took epidural shot and it, it felt great afterwards, they said. But um, so, yeah, maybe this was much needed because you usually get those when you got you know uncomfortable in your back if you're not pregnant of course that's when people take epidural shots or give a birth because you're laying on your back pushing out a baby shout out to my women out there man all right so uh let's get into the next topic uh collins collins is available but let me go ahead and play this clip of him working out
all right look good look fantastic and the thought came to my mind because we know how we rose man he loved the trenches but is he a guy we should sign i say it really depends how serious um cam jurgens foot injury is it depends and the reason why i say it depends is because a that means he's going to be missed for a extensive amount of time b collins is more of a tackle so he really want to help the guard position and that would be like some last option type thing but we only missing one lineman and you know i like tyler steen uh i know we signed the roderick johnson guy he's really good then you got la raven clark is any of these dudes possibly better than collins maybe not but if you're going to get somebody else. I think it should be via trade, but I don't think we need anything else far as on the offensive line. I personally think we are good, but he is an option just in case for that piece. Am I like rushing to get him? No, uh, but I didn't even pull up the article. Sorry, I am slipping, but here we go. You know, he got medical clearance on his ACL MCL surgery two weeks ago and has been putting in work. Uh, he's gauging interest from several teams and is likely to take free agent visits in the near future. Rare to, rare to add this caliber of offensive lineman at this point of the season. Like I said, he is good. I mean, he's good to have as a backup and he possibly will be the best backup if we decide to sign him if jordan Malata or lane johnson go down for maybe a game or two yeah he'll be a solid backup so i wouldn't be surprised one of those several teams is the philadelphia eagles because that's what we do but i'm not running to like oh we gotta go get him because again our guard got hurt not a tackle our guard and I believe in Tyler Steen. I think Tyler Steen is dope. I think he's good. And Suo Peta, I believe in him too. I think both guys are really, really good. So, Eagles, yeah, just test the waters, but no rush to get them. All right, so let's get into this last topic. Jonathan Gannon. Do we miss him, right? So, I keep seeing this graphic go around QBR last year of us was first sat percentage was first yards per play was first so now we 22nd 21st and 17. all right so it's not like jonathan gannon is kicked out of the league so let's look and see what he's doing with the arizona cardinals since the eagles miss him so much cardinals right have the second worst graded defense in football and the fourth worst EPA per play in the league. The side defense is first versus the run, and it's working through, uh, you know, injuries, implementing a pass defense, I should say, while having missed five DBs through four games. Don't get this tweet by copy. <laughs> Clear man. So uh, the guy that put out this tweet, he's known for copy and pasting other people tweets. All right. Um, so do we miss Jonathan Gannon? Absolutely not. I actually would be afraid what Jonathan Gannon would do with this personnel. Now, Sean Desai, world beater. No, but if you want to give Sean Desai the benefit of the doubt, Avante Maddox been out. James Bradbury missed the game. Re Blankenship missed the game. Then you had to adjust with your linebacker being hurt and the Kobe Dean trying to figure it out who missing match. Now you're going into this game with Fletcher Cox. So you you're trying to see what you can do. A little bit of personnel errors here and there. I don't think James Bradbury should be in the slot, but Sean decides trying to figure it, figure it out. I would be afraid if Jonathan Gannon had this defense. Now, Jonathan Gannon, why his numbers were so good last year is because the defense was healthy most of the year. We start feeling injuries, I want to say like around week 11, and I'm guess off the top of my head. I know Vontae Maddox went down with an injury, but he eventually came back during the Super Bowl. 
uh, CJ Garner Johnson missed a couple games, but came back. Like the defense was healthy basically the whole year for him, and he still couldn't get it right in the Super Bowl. Jonathan Gannon. So Jonathan Gannon was not a, a world beater at all. He was um, not that good. I mean, he did. One thing I will say, Jonathan Gannon over Sean Desai is that Jonathan Gannon, when he played average, well, below average quarterbacks, he made them look below average. The Cardinals with Sam Howell made them look below average, but let him play like that top 15 this quarterback might make him look bad. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I would say about Jonathan Gannon. He's known for making bad quarterbacks look really bad. And Sean Desai, I haven't seen that yet, but to give him the benefit of the doubt, he's miss, he's been missing players here and there. And the long-term one was Avante Maddox, whereas though Jonathan Gannon didn't really have to deal with that last year. So I don't miss Jonathan Gannon at all. Um, again, is Sean Desai a world beater? Absolutely not. He got some things to work on, but he's getting better and better. And he do have the one up on Jonathan Gannon with the run defense. That's one thing I could say he approved on way better than Jonathan Gannon. And he will bring a linebacker for the blitz. He will. That's how Nicholas Merle end up with three sacks. Sean Desai does that, but to me, he doesn't have the personnel to me to run the defense like how he want to run it like you give Sean Desai a healthy CJ Garner Johnson you give him Marcus Epps and you have Reed Blankenship rotating or hell give him Reed Blankenship now and CJ Garner Johnson and the defense healthy through the full year damn near maybe Sean Desai look better but right now he's trying to do what he can do like he's working with what he got but uh, yeah, I don't miss this guy. Hey man, what do you think? How do you feel about the news today? Jonathan Gannon, do we actually miss him? Eh, to me, not really. Uh, Leon Collins, should we get him? Mm, we get him, yay, we don't. Eh, it doesn't really matter. Um, Fletcher Cox is officially out, but it's a young guy's time, right? See what Jalen Carter and these guys can do. This is Eagle Al, man. I'm up.